Well, Russia is now accusing Ukrainian forces of launching airstrikes on an oil depot in Russian soil. But Ukraine's Security Council secretary has denied the responsibility for those attacks as peace talks between the two nations continue. But despite major blows to its military supply, Russian forces show no signs of backing down and is reportedly recruiting fighters from Syria while strengthening ties to allies like India and China. More than 4.4 million Ukrainians are now seeking refuge from the onslaught. Well, here with reaction is former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations and former National Security Advisor to President Trump, Ambassador John Bolton. Ambassador, welcome back to the show. Uh, to this day, China has still not denounced the war in Ukraine. How concerned are you that they may help provide military support to Russia? Uh, I think it's a possibility that they'll supply military support, but I think they are already uh, uh, providing Russia with uh, financial backup, for example, Russian banks or other institutions that have been sanctioned uh, can move their money through Chinese banks. Uh, I think China stands ready to increase its purchases of Russian oil and gas if uh, the West more effectively cuts them off. Uh, I think Russia and China have, an, to use an old French diplomatic term, an entente here, an understanding. China has Russia's back in the Ukraine conflict, and I think uh, Russia will have China's back in a conflict over Taiwan or something similar. You know, Ambassador, I, you were on CNN yesterday and asked about what President Trump would do with regard to NATO. I want to play that clip for the audience and have you react after that. I think, as I feared in a second term, if he had been reelected in 2020, that he might well withdraw from NATO. I think this would be a, a catastrophic strategic decision for the United States. Uh, but I don't think it's unreasonable for other NATO members to worry about it. It's another reason to try and put Trump in the rearview mirror. Okay, so so let's let's put the NATO piece aside for a second. I, I I actually would go back a step before that. I don't actually believe we'd be in the situation in the first place. I question whether Putin would have invaded Russia at all if Trump was still in office. Do you disagree? No, I think he would have. Look, th this is uh, uh, one mistake the Biden administration is making is saying this is Putin's war. He's made all these decisions. Uh, I think to understand this best, this is Russia's war. Uh, Putin's view that Ukraine and Belarus, while we're on the subject, are part of the Rodinia, the mother Russia, is widely held in, uh, in, in Russia to this day. And recent independent public opinion polls show support for Putin rising over the past several weeks. So this was coming at some point. Uh, the, the first uh, invasion was in 2014. Uh, and I think it was just a matter so, of time before Putin concluded it was time for the second bite. So explain to me then just why why for four years, for every president what, in the last five presidents, or I, I'm trying to do the math here, he had done something. He had, he had gone to war. He had invaded another country. For four years of Trump, nothing. Why would he have done it suddenly then in a second term of Trump? Well, he only did it twice. Twice is bad enough, don't get me wrong. But he invaded Georgia in 2008 and invaded Ukraine the first time in 2014. What happened after the first invasion of Ukraine in was uh, a series... Uh, that, that was part of the 2014 invasion, to take Crimea and annex it and take the two uh, slices out of the Donbass part of Ukraine. All, all occurred uh, basically about the same time. Uh, what happened after that was the so-called Minsk agreements, which would have fractured Ukraine and, and created a loose confederation. That was supported by the Obama administration and was supported in the first year of the Trump administration, really through 2018. So at that point, Putin still thought he had a chance to get what he wanted without hostilities. Then we saw in the summer of 2018, President Trump come very near to withdrawing from NATO at the uh, Brussels NATO summit that summer of 2018 and the controversy continued through until the summer of 2019 when we had the famous controversy over withholding security assistance from 
Ukraine that went through the entire 2020 election. Now, even Vladimir Putin knows when, when your adversary is in deep trouble, as Zelensky was with its principal ally, the United States, in the middle of an election campaign, you're not going to take the chance uh, of getting involved in that. So I think he thought he would wait until the second Trump term. That didn't happen. He met with Biden in the summer of 2021 for three and a half hours, sized him up, uh, and now we are where we are. I mean, the big question is, how can Putin be stopped at this point? These sanctions don't seem to be working. Ambassador, in the past, I know that you have been a strong advocate of U.S. military involvement in other ways. Where do you come down on U.S. troops on the ground in Ukraine? Well, I think it's too late for that now. I think I think we've made so many mistakes. Uh, the analogy I use is uh, you're asking quite quite legitimately about what I would do on this chess game's 20th move when I think the last 15 from our side have been mistakes. Uh, but I do think it's critical that uh, the Russian invasion not succeed. I think the Ukrainians have uh, fought extraordinarily bravely, and the Russian performance has been catastrophic. That, that leads me to conclude that Putin has to secure something he can call a military victory here, because otherwise the reputational hit that the Russian military has taken is, is irreparable. So I think this conflict's going to go on for a long time. And I think the real issue is, will we apply enough economic pressure against Russia? And will we get uh, the military assistance, the weapons and ammunition to Ukraine in the quantities and the timing that we need? And I don't think we're doing either one of those things effectively right now. Sadly, we aren't. Ambassador John Bolton, appreciate your time this evening. Wish we had more time for you. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Hey, guys, it's Rob Carson. Experts are warning the current 40-year inflation high will only get worse. See so how to protect your IRA with gold. Get a free info kit like this one at birchgold.com slash Newsmax. There's no cost. There's no obligation. Just get your free info kit at birchgold.com slash Newsmax.